Designing a successful vehicle suspension system so the vehicle does what we want it to do is all about controlling the motion of the knuckle. Hello everyone, I'm Hubert Mace and this is Suspensions Explained. Controlling the motion of the wheel in a car so that it moves predictably over bumps and through potholes and around corners is the object we're trying to achieve when we design a suspension system. And since the wheel is attached to the knuckle, the motion of the knuckle is what we're trying to control. In order to better understand how to control the motion of the knuckle, we need to understand a concept in engineering known as the degrees of freedom. And to best understand that, we're going to go to the woodshop and use a model so we can explain what degrees of freedom mean. Okay, well we're here in the woodshop where I've built this model to help explain the concept of degrees of freedom. It's a frame, includes this block of wood, and includes these six rods, which are little threaded rods with rod ends on the end. To understand the concept of degrees of freedom, we need to understand that every object that exists, be it this block of wood, be it a part of your suspension, or be it a satellite in outer space, it has six distinctly different ways in which it can move. These are what are called the six degrees of freedom. Let me explain what I mean by that. This object, this block in this case, can translate in any of three different directions. It can move fore aft, it can move side to side, and it can move up and down. So there's three ways that it could move. And any movement that I can make for this box can be described as a combination of those three directions. So that's three degrees of freedom that it has. But this block can also rotate in three different directions. It can rotate around the fore-aft direction. It can rotate around the side-to-side -side direction. And it can rotate about the vertical direction. So that's another three degrees of freedom that this block has. In total, there are six. Three translational, and then the three rotational ones. And any movement that this box does, from any position to any other position, can be described as a combination of one or more of those degrees of freedom. Now, if we want to control the motion of this block, we have to control those degrees of freedom. And that's where these rods come in. Let's show what I mean by that. Right now, this box is not being held, it's held by my hand, of course, but really it's not being held by anything, so it can move any way it wants to. Now, let's connect it to our frame and see what happens. Okay, here we have one rod connecting this block to our frame. As you can see, I can still move this box up and down, I can still move it side to side, I can rotate it about the vertical direction, I can rotate it about the fore aft direction, and I can rotate it about the side to side direction. However, I cannot move it in the fore aft direction anymore. This rod stops that motion. So that degree of freedom has now been taken away. But as you notice, I've got one rod and I'm short one degree of freedom. Let's see what happens when we connect a second rod. Okay, we have two rods now connecting this block to our frame. And as you can see, I can still move the box up and down, still move it side to side. I can still rotate it about the side to side direction. And I can still rotate it about the fore aft direction. But as before, I cannot move it in the fore aft direction. And now I can't rotate it about the vertical axis either. So I've lost the freedom to move it in the fore aft direction and I've lost the freedom to rotate it about the vertical axis. Two links, two degrees of freedom have now been locked out. Let's add another link. All right, I've added a third link. Now let's see what's happening. I can still move the box up and down I can still rotate it about the side-to-side -side direction. I can still rotate it about the fore-aft direction. But as before, I cannot move it 
in the fore-aft direction, and I can't rotate it about the vertical direction. But in addition to that, I can't move it in the side-to-side -side direction either. This rod stops that from happening. So now I've got three rods, three degrees of freedom that are locked out. I think you're beginning to see a pattern here. Every time I add a link, I take out a degree of freedom. Now, which degree of freedom I take out depends on how I orient these links and where they connect. But the concept is always the same. Every time I add a link, I lose a degree of freedom. Let's keep going. Okay, I now have four links connecting my block of wood to my frame. And as you can see, I can still move up and down and I can still rotate about the side-to-side -side direction. But that's all I can do. I could have rotated about the fore-aft direction before, but now I can't do that anymore. I can't rotate like this anymore. I can't translate in the lateral dire fore-aft direction. I cannot translate in the side-to-side -side direction anymore. I can't rotate about the fore-aft direction, and I can't rotate about the vertical direction. Four links, four degrees of freedom have been locked out. Now, the concept I'm trying to show here is what's critical to understand. Every time I add one of these links, I lose a degree of freedom. So, if you want to control an object, you need to know how many degrees of freedom you need to have left over. In other words, what motion am I trying to allow in my object? If you understand what exact motions you want to allow, that will tell you how many links you need in order to control the object. A good example of this in the suspension world is a regular independent suspension. I want the wheel, or the knuckle in this case, to be able to move up and down. And that's all I want it to be able to do. I don't want it to move side to side. I don't want it to be able to move fore aft. I just want it to move up and down. So that's one degree of freedom that I need to have. So therefore, I need to have five links to take out the other five degrees of freedom that I don't want to have. Another example would be a live axle in a suspension. A live axle needs to be able to move up and down. The axle needs to be able to move up and down, but it also needs to be able to rotate in the rear view so that the wheels can move over bumps individually and so the body can roll. That's two degrees of freedom that a live axle needs to be able to accommodate. So therefore, you only need four links to control a live axle not five. If you had five, you would only be allowing for one degree of freedom of motion in the axle, which is not enough. And we'll talk about that in another video when we look at four link axles in more detail. For now, let's keep going. All right, I've added a fifth link to our block of wood connecting to our frame. And as you can see, the vertical motion is all that I have left. I can't rotate, I can't move this thing in any other direction, within reason, of course, because these joints aren't perfect. But you get the idea. All I can do is move the object up and down. It's starting to look a bit like a suspension, isn't it? It can move up and down, and that's it. Now, I could, of course, add a six link and lock this thing down completely. There you are. Six links attached to this block of wood, and it can't move in any direction except for within the slop of these joints. But realistically, this thing is completely and utterly locked down. All six degrees of freedom have been taken away, and this block of wood is completely controlled motion-wise. Well, I hope that makes it clear to you. Degrees of freedom are controlled by rods, and the number of rods determine how many degrees of freedom you remove. Now, there's lots of ways of holding a, an object, of course. These rods are just one way. But any method that you can think of to hold a box like this can be thought of as some combination of these rods. In a suspension, for instance, an A-arm is actually just two rods, where the two ends of, of the two rods end up in the same place. Other types of uh, control arms or other types of fixtures that hold objects in place can be thought of as some combination of these links that hold an object or only allow certain movements to occur. It can all boil down to a multi-link type of setup like this. It's just a question of how the links are arranged and what form those links take. 
But the concepts are the same. Six degrees of freedom require six connections of some sort to control the motion. Anything less than that, and you have a degree of freedom left over, like you do in a suspension, that would allow the knuckle to move up and down. Or in the case of a live axle, you'd have two degrees of freedom left over that allow the axle to move up and down and to roll. I hope this was informative. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button and the notification, and we'll see you next time.